Hi folks, Doyle Dykes here. Welcome to my Sunday String Along. And I'll be stringing along today on my Gill guitar. This is my Doyle Dykes model. People ask me, do you still play your Gill? Oh yeah, I love this guitar. You know, Merle played a, a Gill guitar. forget I don't sing as high as I used to and I don't sing that much anyway. <laughs> this has a picture of my dad on the inside just like my uh, 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 my signature uh, uh, Taylor has also the orange one that I use so much but isn't this beautiful look at this I mean what a gorgeous instrument this one here was was made, I've showed it on here on the show before, and uh, this one was made, pretty much every stick of it was uh, was built by Wren Ferguson, so I call it Wren, and uh, it's the color of the Dwayne Eddy guitar when they rescued uh, Dwayne's guitar from the flood. He sent it to New Hartford, uh, Connecticut, and uh, it was this color, and I thought it was the original color. And they, they said, well, we tried our best to match it. I said, man, that's the color I want on my signature model guitar. LR Bags pickup system preamp and a LB6 pickup here. Yuri Shishkov, the great designer from Fender, did the uh, the roses on there. So if you can see that, just gorgeous, gorgeous guitar. And uh, I just love this thing. And uh, this was to be my signature strap. And so you can see the, the two thumb picks for DD. <laughs> we had it all set up and uh, Still may come out with something like this in the future. I've been talking to those guys over there and uh, we'll talk more serious about that. Thank the Lord for Shub Capos. We appreciate them. Appreciate all of the folks that help us out. GHS Strings. 
appreciate them. And uh, I'll do a, a commercial here in a minute. Here we go. This guitar was made in New Hartford at the uh, Ovation Factory. Ended that song. And sometimes it was. <laughs> I think that's the way I ended up. 
of recording it. And um, I would go up there and, and uh, play shows for Gill Guitars. Larry Thomas was a part of that. And uh, when he was the CEO of Fender back in the day, which Gill was a part of that. So we had Guild and then Gretsch, uh, all that together. I, I was in heaven, folks. I really, I really, really enjoyed that. Uh, I remember recording that song at Aspen Pittman's place. Aspen Pittman was the, he was the uh, founder and owner of Groove Tubes. He sold that to Fender as well. And so when you when you really think about uh, guys like that, they're just way smarter than me. He's he has this tube amp book. I don't know if you've ever seen it, Aspen Pittman. People ask me all the time about the microphones that I use here, especially these two right here. These are groove tube mics. They actually have little tubes inside. And so they're just, you know, and he made mics that would normally be worth thousands of dollars. He would make them accessible, you know, to people that, like me, you know. But he actually gave me this one. And then I think Robert Wilson, uh, they somehow went in with the leases somehow, and Rob was uh, involved in that. And so that was a gift from Rob. And I, record, uh, I recorded that song at Aspen's place in, in Los Angeles, uh, and it's called New Hartford is the name of it. And I recorded it, like I said, on my 12 string. And so anyway... Uh, as we went to lunch, I got a call. We were talking to Paul Huber uh, of Huber Breeze Music up in Fraser, Michigan. And the engineer used to work for him. And we were just talking. He said, man, it's a shame what happened to the factory today. I said, what are you talking about? In New Hartford, you didn't hear about it? I said, what are you talking about? And he said, well, they shut it down. And uh, a, a capital investment uh, company came in and took over Fender. And they said, well, we don't need that anymore. And uh, KMC, that was also, uh, they were the owners of Ovation Guitars, and they shut the entire place down, fired all those people. It was one of the worst things, and uh, I, I just ha had honored those people with that song. I had just recorded it, and they looked at me and said, well, Doyle, you know, we've, maybe this was uh, you know, just a God thing that you did that to honor your friends over there. I mean, I sure had no idea that they would be shutting the factory down. You know, and sometimes, you know, the Lord prompts you on things that, that will happen like that. Uh, and he speaks to us in different ways. And that's what we've been talking about in the last couple of weeks, you know. Because his still small voice, you know, I, I can't emphasize enough to, to get still before the Lord and just and hear his voice. Sometimes I'll borrow things from my own songs like this.
into that. Ask me, how do you remember all your songs? I don't always, and, and but sometimes when I'm playing, it just kind of comes back to me. Now I actually call that "60 on 60 Broadway," and uh, because Fred Grish was connected uh, also, still is with Fender. Uh, when I he asked me to do a, an album of uh, all Gretsch stuff, and uh, and which I did, and boy, that was a that was a real treat. I mean, what a blessing that was. And so when I did that, uh, there was a song I had. A, I needed another song, and I thought, well, I'll just do that on my Gretsch, you know. I, and so I borrowed that from uh, from New Hartford, the song that I wrote, you know. <laughs> So anyway, and so uh, there's there's an album that I did. Let me see if I can find it here, if I have it on me. Uh, no, I'll show you what I do have. Uh, I'm sure I have it here somewhere, but but I have string winders we have from Shub. <laughs> and of course, capos. And uh, you can order capos right off of our site. And uh, I really love the, the this uh, gold one. It's beautiful. But I use all of them. They're wonderful, wonderful capos. So Shub has been a, uh, really helping us and sponsoring and allowing us also to offer these capos to you online. So just go to doyledykes.com. That's the best way to do it. So if you want to support this, it's a great thing. We appreciate it if you do. You don't have to, but, but just being here. And the best thing is to just like us and subscribe and uh, send it to your friends. I know I say that all the time, but please do. If you haven't subscribed, we would love to reach the 20,000 marks soon. And that would be a blessing with uh, uh, Google, uh, YouTube, that whole thing. Uh, this is a DVD and a hat show print on the front here. It has footage of me at Ricky Skagg studio with some great musicians, including Tommy Emanuel, Steve Warner. I mean, some really good pickers. My son, Caleb's on here, my brother, Aubrey. And of course, Jimmy Caps and Dave Pomeroy, John Gardner. Here we go. Man, there was some, I mean, Andy Left, which is on here, Rob Ikes. This was so much fun. I have some footage of me at Nebworth House in, uh, in Nebworth, England. Uh, Songs of Faith and Freedom. Here's the album that I was just talking about that I did on 60 Broadway. And I did it on, uh, on an old Gretsch that was made at 60 Broadway. It's a 1964 uh, 6120, and I use that. I call it Harvey. It's the one that Harvey uh, Simmons had, the, the good barber uh, friend of ours I grew up knowing. And then we have this Treasures of the Spirit. And, uh, and then, of course, this is the latest one I've done, Full Circle. And I'm starting a new album next week. Uh, I've been doing taxes all this week, so tomorrow I go to Texas. So from Texas to Texas... So, wow, we have a lot going on. Uh, and then uh, country fried picking. And so maybe, I mean, I'm still look, kind of looking for direction on this record, but I'm thinking of doing another country. It's been since uh, 2001 that I did this album. It has Wabash Cannonball, has a lot of Chet Medley, has a lot of fast stuff, me and Jesus and my old guitar. Uh, country fried picking and a song that I wrote. And uh, I'm thinking about doing another one, like Second Helping, Country Fried Picking. Of course, I'll have some, uh, uh, also some of my newer songs that I've written that uh, you've probably heard some of them, but uh, anyway. Uh, and then we have my book, of course. And I think, I, I don't know if I showed you that or not, but The Lights of Marfa. And I just, I just got a, a really nice letter from a guy that said he just read my book and uh, oh also we have strings you can get them by the box like this or you can get them individually nylon strings with a wound silver third these are Doyle Dyke strings as well as these are my signature strings here as well 10 and a half through 42 or, you know, I mean just, I'm sorry 
so uh, I don't know what I'm thinking. I just ordered some other strings for electric guitar. People ask me what I use on my electric guitar. I use GHS, of course. And uh, actually, uh, 10 and a half through 50, I believe it is, uh, David, the David Gilmore strings, I use those a lot on my uh, Les Paul Gold Top. And then I will put a, a wound third, usually a, like a 20 on those. And then he also has uh, other strings that are, mm, I think, nine or nine and a half. Uh, and, and then I, I don't always put a wound third on it if it's for a Telecaster. But that's what I use a lot. And so if you want to get our strings, you can order these from our website. We appreciate it so very much. Um, and, and again, once again, like and subscribe. There's a song that I did a while ago, When God Dips His Love in My Heart. This song was published right here in town by the Church of God. This is one of the old Church of God hymnals. And uh, they also used uh, the shape notes. But it says... Uh, Tennessee Music and Publishing Company. And I didn't realize it, but the man that was in charge, I think of all the um, uh, advertising and everything, lived in this house, in my house. And he also he was a, a, a wealthier guy, really, but he just loved the church. And uh, I don't know if he donated his time, but he was in charge of marketing. And uh, the, the, but this song, When God Dips His Love in My Heart, written by uh, a wonderful guy that was a piano player. It is an older black man. He said, when he, a friend of mine, uh, Leon Ellis, was here in town. They were looking for new songs, and Cleveland Derricks walked in. He said, well, brothers, this one just goes right clean down to my soul. And he took his long fingers, and he just stretched them out like that, and he started playing, When God Dips His Love in My Heart on the piano right down the street from where I live. Isn't that great? Oh, wow. What an amazing songwriter, too. Uh, when God dips his pen of love in my heart, he writes my soul a message he wants me to know. God speaks. He speaks to our hearts. His spirit, all divine, fills this sinful soul of mine. Now, uh, another, Henry Ellis, uh, uh, David Ellis, or uh, David Ellis plays a uh, wonderful piano player and arranger. Uh, it's his uncle, Henry. Uh, his dad was Leon Ellis, and Henry Ellis was Vep Ellis's brother, the great singer. Now, you'd have to be at least my age to even remember these names. But I was at Henry Ellis. He was the, All these guys were pastors as well as great singers and songwriters. And, uh, and he said, Doyle, uh, God sets our happy soul on fire, not our sinful soul on fire. So he changed that part, but I like, I like them both. And so anyway, when God dips his love in my heart. So God can speak to our hearts. And that's what we've been talking about. And uh, But there's a man that wrote me a letter the other day. And uh, we'll just call him Nick. He lives in California. And he was, he was just uh, talking about the book and how it just really touched his heart. I appreciate that so very, very much. He's originally from the South. He's a musician. He's been playing for a number of years. And... Uh, and then it said that uh, he, he, he came across my book and he'd, he'd walked away from the Lord for a while and he, he had rededicated his heart to God. And uh, just talking about, uh, this is a wonderful thing and uh, how the Lord has just changed his life. And I appreciate that so very much. And we give all the credit to the Lord for that. Pray, he wants me to pray for his son. I'll keep this letter, uh, Nick, and continue. I'll be praying for you and your boy as well. Thank you so much for this, and keep playing, and enjoy your music that God has given you, and enjoy the life that God has given you. Jesus said, uh, I am come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. He said that when he was talking about my sheep hear my voice. He's the shepherd, we're the sheep. He said, Satan comes to steal, kill, and destroy, but I am come that you might have life and have it. And if you can hear me say this, and have it more abundantly, say, I have it. I have it more abundantly. And, uh, and here's another guy. He said, I reach, uh, recently uh, purchased some GHS strings. He, nylon and acoustic. He said, that, oh, he said that he loves the tone for both his guitars. And uh, he has a Godin multi act great guitar. Acoustic ones are for his Maiden 808 TE, Tommy Manual. Uh, great guitars you have. Not feeling sorry for you. You're a guitar poorer. 
and uh, he likes a Sunday string along, but he has a problem with a 6120. Said it needs uh, probably a neck reset. Uh, he lives up in or around Chicago area, it looks like. Howard, uh, man, I don't know. It's been a while since I've, I know there are great uh, stores up there that should be able to help you, but you know that. Um, I mean, you know, uh, you, you've taken it to Gruen. Um, I, I mean, of course, my friend Kelly Barber could do it in Action Sound in, in Hawkins, Texas. Just call Kelly or ask for Mikey, either one of those guys. But Kelly Barber could do that for you. Uh, and if he d doesn't have time, he would know who can, perhaps even in your area. Also, Dan Blum at Blum Guitars there in Fairview, Tennessee. He used to work for George Gruen. George Gruen's great as well. And uh, that's my recommendation. So if, you don't, if, you, if you're down in the Texas way, take it over to uh, Action Sound. If you're in Nashville, uh, try uh, Dan, Dan Blom, B-L-O-A. He makes great guitars too, and uh, he worked on one of my Olsons not long ago. I, I was uh, trying to pull the, uh, the LB-6 pickup out of it, and the whole thing just broke off. And it was my fault. I pulled a little bit too hard, and, and he installed a new one and did a beautiful job on it. And I don't let just anybody do that to my Olsen guitars especially. And uh, so anyway, I wanted to talk to you a little bit more about hearing the voice of God, also guidance, you know, to be guided by the Lord. Now, I have so many notes here, I won't be able to get to all of them. Uh, not today. I mean, oh, my Lord, we're already uh, at <laughs> a mark where I, I needed to be uh, wrapping up. Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice. I know them and they follow me. And I love this. He says, I give them eternal life and they will never perish. No one can snatch them away from me. Isn't that beautiful? And uh, we'll go over this, uh, some other things next week. Uh, perhaps, maybe not. But uh, hearing the voice of God, Jeremiah 7, 23, Obey me and I will, I will be your God and you will be my people. Do everything that I, as I say, and all will be well. So it's one thing to hear the voice of God. It's another thing to obey. Obey the voice of God. In the New Revised Edition, Obey my voice, and I will be your God, and you shall be my people. And walk only in the way that I command you, so that it may be well with you. Sounds also like, you know, the Bible talks, uh, Joshua, in Joshua 1 and 8, meditate on his word day and night, and it shall go well, we, well with you. You'll have great success. And observe to do all that is written in, therein. Observe to do it. So obey his word. Do his word. Proverbs 4, 20 and 22, my son, pay attention to what I say. Listen carefully to my words. Don't lose sight of them. Let them penetrate deep into your heart. For they bring life to those who find them and healing to their whole body. Proverbs written, Solomon, you know the words of Solomon. And don't lose sight of them. Let them penetrate deep into your heart. Isn't that beautiful? They bring life to those who find them and health to their whole body. So, you know, how does God speak? For we know one thing, that God will never tell you anything that is contradictory to his word. I mean, you can't go into a bar or something and, and go up to a, a woman or, or, or whatever, you, you know, as far as uh, if you're married, go up to the, someone of the opposite sex and say, God told me to have an affair with you. I mean, I don't think so. That's not going to happen. Uh, you know, and God has never told you to, oh, go ahead and take that. You know, they have plenty and, and uh, to take something that isn't yours. Anything that's contradictory to the word of God, God's not going to, God's not going to do that. I mean, I heard some really crazy things too. And pastors that I know that were very, very successful in the past. Um, and it just seemed like they were surrounded by yes people, yes men. So they, they just had the idea that they could do no wrong and they could just uh, go up to a woman and, uh, you know, and uh, have an affair and God, it, and it was okay. They were the man of God. Um, that's wrong. I don't care who you are, how big your church is, or, or small. I mean, that's just anything that's contradictory to what God says is not right. So God has not told you to, uh, to go out with someone else and, when you're married. I mean, you know, there are certain, we just understand this kind of thing. 
And so whatever he says to you, you'll know it's God if it doesn't contradict the word. We talked about the still small voice last week, that still small voice, but you have to be still to hear that. Also, uh, Romans 10, 17, faith comes by hearing, hearing the word of God. Hear, uh, it, and one translation says here, New American Standard, so then faith comes from hearing and hearing by the word of Christ, the word of Christ, the word of Christ. Well, Christ is the word. He's the living word. And so uh, this is a rhema word. There are two words for, uh, actually, for the word, and one of them is, uh, is the printed word, you know, logos, and then also rhema, which is the spoken word. And I don't believe that God has spoken to us for thousands of years just to completely just cut it off. He still speaks. Jesus said, my sheep hear, my sheep hear my voice. I know them and they follow me. And, uh, and again, that's in John 10, 27. Faith comes by hearing the word of Christ. And so that is what faith comes by hearing the word of faith. faith comes. That's a good thing right there, those first two words. Faith comes. We know that faith comes. But it comes by hearing the word of Christ. So it's not necessarily just picking up a Bible and say, God, God's going to give me a word. Well, you might be studying something about, you know, Daniel, or you might be studying Joseph and his brothers. And that's a beautiful thing. But when you really, something that builds faith is something that God especially speaks to you. He, I'm not saying he can't speak through his word, but when God speaks to you directly and into your heart and it builds your faith, like you, you know, just little things. Like last week I said, you know, I was thinking about, I want, I'm going to put on my watch. I haven't worn a watch in a while. And, and so I went and put this orange watch. I don't know if you, you probably didn't notice it. You know, probably, but I just felt like I want to start wearing my watches again. I haven't worn it because we have cell phones and everything. But I love my watches. But I, I, I don't have that many of them, maybe two or three. But, uh, but this one here was a very special watch. I saw, oh, man, I, Gary Hill. And I put it on. And, uh, and, and I, uh, also, uh, you know, my my rings and stuff I don't usually wear anymore because you know I just don't wear them out very much for one thing I'm getting older and I don't I want my hands to be weighted down too much but I, last week I did that and and uh, and I got a call Sunday afternoon from uh, Barney Hill uh, Gary Gary's son and Gary was in the jewelry business he gave me this watch and he was a guitar buddy uh, I was just talking about uh, Roy Clark with my son. I said, yeah, he played a Birdland. I've had a couple of Birdlands. I said, Gary Hill has my Birdland. Just told him that the night before. And then uh, I put on this watch. I was just thinking about it. And he told, Barney told me, he said, Dad passed away this weekend. And I had no idea. And, I, and, it's just, and it just kind of, and I told him about that. I said, that is so strange, Gary. And how many times have you been thinking about somebody and they've been on your heart? And, you know, the sad thing is sometimes I don't follow up with it. And, but, and that's what I'm saying. We should obey God's word. When God prompts you in something, we should act on it right then. Of course, I don't think I even had Gary's uh, information as far as that goes, but it was just one of those things that God just kind of lets you know, indicates that I'm, I'm here with you and I was there with him. And I'll be there, and I and we've been praying for uh, the Hill family, and uh, and also David Pack and his family as well. And uh, through a sense, uh, in fact, that happened with David. I had him on my heart, and uh, and I told him I was praying for him, and we're just praying for the Lord. To do. And I had my granddaughter call him up, uh, my daughter, of course, Haley, and she had Emmy Lou, who's who's seven years old. I said if I was going to have anybody pray for me, it'd be Emmy Lou. That kid just has a touch of God on her life. And she prayed for David and the, and the Lord really, really touched him. And in fact, just go to, if you just go to uh, Fairview First Baptist Church for last Sunday, you'll see Haley and she brought her up to sing a song. And what a blessing, what a blessing that is. You know, Childlike faith. It's a wonderful thing. And that builds your faith. Faith comes by hearing the word. He says, I know them that follow me. My sheep hear my voice. 
And uh, also, God speaks through a sense of peace. You ever, ever hear anybody say, well, I just don't have a peace about this, or, man, I just have a real peace about this. I have, have such a peace about this house. So, like for Caleb, the first one we didn't. In fact, I didn't finish that, uh, what I was talking about last week, but we had gone out and found this house, and my wife didn't have a piece about it at all. But we thought, well, this is convenient. It's, it's something he could afford, and we'll see if he will qualify. Well, they pre-qualified him that night. And then the call said, well, you know what? I don't think we're going to do that. And boy, Rita just had a strong, you know. So I said, okay, I'm in agreement with that. You don't feel good about it? Well, let's obey that. And so then I found this. It just came on the market. And uh, Caleb put a, 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 an offer in on it. But the thing is, he was pre-qualified for the, because of the other house. Had we not done that, there were several other people looking for that house. I don't think we would have gotten it. And so it's just like the Lord prompts you. It, he, he speaks to your heart to do things. Because we ask him, help us, Lord. Give us direction. You know, and that's the thing. You have to ask God. There's a whole lot more things here that I would, I would go over. But if any man lacks uh, wisdom or direction, let him ask of God. I, I want to, there's a top of my head shot here, folks, again, I'm sure. But, but uh, you know, if, 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 if you really think about it, I was talking about be still and know that I'm God. Here's my old Bible when I was a pastor years and years ago. And I, was, I had been talking about uh, Saint, you know, John 11, uh, chapter 11, when Jesus raised Lazarus from the dead. And you remember when uh, that Martha ran out to meet Jesus, but Mary sat still in the house. She sat still. And people say, you mean she was still there? No, she sat still in the house. And she was in a, in a state of being still. And I believe she was also in a state of thanksgiving and give, giving thanks and worship to the Lord. She abode two days still. And Jesus abode two days still in the same place where he was. You remember the story I shared just a few weeks ago on, the, on our string along. But if you look at, um, the Bible says here that Jesus loved Martha and Mary and Lazarus he, in verse 5. Now, Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. It doesn't mean he didn't, you know, he loved her, you know, because sometimes the Bible says that those whom God loves, he, he chastens and he corrects. And he did that. And uh, in Luke chapter, uh, uh, this is at actually chapter 10, and Jesus was visiting Martha and Mary. It came to pass when they went, he entered into a certain village a certain woman named Martha received him into her house. Now, this was Martha's house. And she had a sister called Mary, who also, listen carefully, sat at Jesus' feet and heard his word. She was glued in on everything he said. She sat at his feet and heard his word. But Martha was cumbered about. <laughs> that means to distract. Cumbered about uh, to drag around with care. She had a lot of care she, had, she cared too much for the wrong thing. But Martha was cumbered about with much, uh, much serving. And, and uh, she was more interested in finger sandwiches than she was listening to the word of God. <laughs> Can you imagine having the son of God at your house? And came to him and said, Lord, dost thou not care that my sister has left me to serve alone? Bid her, therefore, that she help me. No, he, make her come help me. And Jesus said, Martha, Martha, I can just see him doing this. Martha, Martha. Now, Mama, I'm not talking about you. Your name's Martha. I'm not talking about my mama. But Jesus said, Martha, Martha. He didn't just say, now, Martha. He said, Martha, Martha. Said it twice. Thou art careful and troubled about many things. Careful and troubled, but only one thing is needful. And Mary has chosen that good part or that beneficial part which shall not be taken away from her. And so let's continue to, to pray and obey and be still and sit at the feet of Jesus and hear his word. And when you have a peace about something or God speaks to your heart, God spoke to my heart at the studio in Los Angeles that very day to record that song for those guys. He, to, he really spoke to my heart to record that song for those boys in, in New Hartford. And that was the very day they shut that factory down, you know. But it touched their lives. It really did.
You know, God goes ahead of us. He goes before us. He's all around us. And so if you will invite him, if any man lacks direction or wisdom, I wish I had time to read that, that entire chapter of James 1, but I don't have time today. But he said, let him ask of God. And when you ask God for direction or, or whatever it is you're asking God for, give a, Lord, give me a clear cut direction. I remember that happening to me so many times during 2020. Nobody knew where in the world they were going. I kept proclaiming God's going to give me a 2020 vision in 2020. He spoke that to me before I heard anything about uh, you know, the coronavirus. Never heard of that. And, but God spoke to me. He was going to give me a 2020 vision in 2020. And he always allowed me to see just where I needed to go. And that was the word. I was in the backyard. And I, you maybe heard me say this before. But I had a flashlight that my son, who's in law enforcement, said, Dad, check this little flashlight out. Man, it was powerful, so powerful. You could shine it all, you know, in, big, in trees, you know. shouldn't do that in your neighbor's yard or whatever. I didn't do that. But, but uh, I could shine it all over the place, different buildings or whatever. But it dawned on me, I don't need to see what's way down the road. I just need to see what's in front of me. And God allowed me to see just where I needed to walk. He gave me a 20-20 vision, and he'll do that for you. I walked out one day, and God spoke to my heart. He spoke to me very, very plain. Call Ricky Skaggs and tell him that you love him. And I'm thinking, well, he knows I love him, Lord, you know. And I said that to him. Well, he knows I love him. I didn't want to bother Ricky. It was just during the pandemic. It was in one of those times. And I just, I was walking. And it was like, call him now. And I texted him. Oh, yeah, no, just contact him. And so I said, Ricky, I just appreciate you so much. I love you, brother. I'm not just trying to throw a name out there. But Ricky's been my friend for a long time. He loves God. And uh, he immediately contacted me back, Doyle. I love you, brother. What are you doing September so-and-so? Of course, nobody was doing hardly anything. I said, what do you want me to do? However, I will say it. I played at First Baptist Dallas on Sunday before I went over there on Tuesday. Went from Dallas to the Grand Ole Opry. said, I want you at the Ryman Auditorium with me. We're doing an all-worship praise for two solid days. All worship and praise, just giving glory to the Lord during this time. And I was right there, and, and I, I played, and Haley, I had. I said, you mind if I bring Haley? By all means, and we worshiped the Lord. And, and then Ricky came up right after me, and Gordon Kennedy, you know, wow. And so what a wonderful time. But it had I not taken he, and heeded that call that God had spoken to me and acted on it, it would have never happened. And what a blessing that was. So when you hear the voice of God, also be prepared to do what he says and to, to be uh, prepared to act on it. Amen? Obey the voice of the Lord. Praise the Lord. There's a whole lot of other things I was going to say, but I think I've said enough. Let's pray. Father God, thank you that we can hear the voice of God. We can hear your voice. And you said, my sheep hear my voice and I know them and nothing shall be able to take them out of my hands. They'll be with me forever. We thank you for this promise. If there's anybody that hasn't experienced that, Lord, I pray today that they'll receive you in their heart. In fact, if that's you, say, Lord, forgive me my sins. Lord, I want to, I want to live for you. Help me to do that. Lord, help make me the man you want me to be. I trust you that you are the potter and I am the clay and your will is the best thing for my life. So I put myself on the wheel today. Make me what you want me to be. In Jesus' name, I receive you as Lord. In Jesus' name. Well, praise God. Well, God bless you folks and thanks for joining me on my Sunday string along.